The greatest NBA preseason game of all time saw Stephen Curry put both Sacramento and the refs to sleep. Down 10, Curry checked back in with 7 minutes left and proceeded to score slash assist on 18 of Golden State's last 27 points, climaxing after the officials unnecessarily stopped the game for seemingly 20 minutes reviewing an out-of-bounds call, with Steph somehow regaining a flow in order to save his best for last. Let's bask in how Wardell put on a patented clinic of basketball mastery in front of the Bay Area fateful, and also how the 4-0 Golden State Warriors have gotten their vibes back. Stay tuned. Right quick, just 14.6% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, subscribe and turn on notifications, splash thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks to the world for any bit of support, back to the content. We'll get to his fourth quarter flame throwing, but opening the night, you get a feel for the SCJK connection that's going to be deadly if Steve Kerr gives it more time to blossom. As Steph goes double tween behind the back into the Kaminga slip screen, nice wide roll from Kaminga gets him the perfect angle downhill. Steph hits him with the bouncer right after he slips, and a nice lefty attack from Jonathan completes the transaction. Saric cuts off Curry's off ball rep when he topples to the floor. But that doesn't stop Steph from impulsively triggering the kick and relocate action with Wiggs, zipping around to the left wing for the Andrews swing, proceeding to instantaneously create room for a one dribble step back while utterly smothered by Fox. Sideline out of bounds sees Jackson Davis set a UCLA screen for Steph, Steph set a UCLA screen for Wiggs, then pop out to receive a flare from Jackson Davis, and 1-2 step into the catch and release. In my last video, I said Dre was the best passer on the dubs, Chris Paul's probably second, and it's crazy that with how good of a facilitator he is, that's Steph's third best, as Chris finds Steph on the left wing, whose glance to the corner gets Monk closing out on Wiggins, Curry fakes as if he's going up for a layup, getting Barnes to commit, then he dumps it off to Trace. For all the flack he gets for his defense, this navigation through the Barnes pin down and Sabonis handoff where Steph shuts down Herder's driving lane and strips him wasn't half bad for a so-called liability. Kaminga's ghost screen gets Steph to switch onto the slower Barnes, who he hits with a momentum cross and simultaneous move and jab, shaking him for some typical mismatch obliteration. Back to the kick and relocate, as this time it gets Curry a clear lane for a contested Euro step. Gary Payton II's elite rebounding for a guard allows him to spring over Mitchell for the O board, and he knows exactly where Curry is, as both Steph and GP2 celebrate before the ball drops through. Now onto the fourth quarter mastery where Steph rejects the moody screen to instead curry slide to his right, proceeding to hit Jackson Davis with a bouncer in the dunker spot after Sabonis rotated off him. Just a great read by Steph, great finish from TJD. But here's where the real fun begins, as with the dubs down 10 with under 5 minutes left, on in and out dribbles followed by 4 consecutive Michael Jordan as tweens on in and out around the TJD screen, uber contested deep range bomb with literally no space. This man is insane. He's far from done there though, as he utilizes the Sarge cross screen, intelligently pump fakes to get Sabonis out of his shoes, giving him enough time to take a dribble and drain the wide open triple. This seems like it's supposed to be a floppy action, but Sarge has no idea what they're running, so Steph just finds his way to the right block, posts up on Herder and pulls out the one-legged Dirk fader, as this man's bag is damn well-rounded. But the dubs are down 4 with under 42 seconds left, yet Steph is unfazed as the initial action off the SOB doesn't get him open, so Steph goes into the kick and relocate with Saric, pump faking to get past Mitchell, then rising up out of control in the face of Fox to somehow bank it in. After consecutive missed free throws with the game on the line by Saric, plus an absolute joke of a referee stoppage for a review that took forever, the dubs were still down one. But give credit to Draymond for providing Steph with some motivation on the sidelines before he hit the shot. As in my opinion, the Steph Dre friendly in house rivalry is going to be key to the Warriors' success this season. Draymond has always known exactly how to motivate Curry, and he did just that, despite not being healthy. Because Kerr didn't draw up anything intricate for the last play, just a Steph take us home isolation. For those that say Curry needs screens to thrive, think again, as Curry gets Foxy Cleopatra leaning with the triple threat, allowing him to create an insane amount of space on just a one dribble step back, and you gotta love the hilarious trot back to stick it to the haters afterwards. And there was plenty of hate for Steph afterwards, with people on Twitter saying he can only hit clutch shots in the preseason. It's almost like those people forgot about his clutch performances in the finals against Boston with the dubs down 2-1 in that finals. Don't doubt the chef, who will turn the slightest inkling of disregard into straight fuel to his fire. 
for the team as a whole, despite Kaminga getting subbed out with six minutes left, lining up with when Curry was subbed back in, it was good to see him stay engaged on the bench, not let that bother him. Then say post game, he thinks this team can do something special this year, which vamped the aura. JK is truly blossoming in every facet and has to keep it up if Kerr's going to trust him to play in the clutch. That said, despite some missed free throws with the game on the line, the man who was in instead of Kaminga being Dario Saric did play a stellar game for the most part, as the 29-year-old Croatian dropped 14 points, 6 rebounds, and 2 steals off the bench. The Dario signing is going to pay extreme dividends, given his ability to play pick and pop ball and act as the facilitator out of horns and split cut actions. The man's got the capacity to join Andrew Bogut and Nemanja Bjelica as one of the great five-out centers throughout the dynasty's history. Speaking of well-suited five men, Trace Jackson Davis continues to resemble a draft steal. Writer for The Athletic and Tim Kawakami said it best on TJD, stating Trace Jackson Davis has been better for the Warriors than 2020's second overall pick and now Detroit Piston, James Wiseman. Reply to that statement reads, Not even a question at this point, always in the right place at the right time, aside from smoking a few layups, he's played his role extremely well. Well said. As TJD seems to be a really high IQ big that can set screens, catch passes in traffic, rebound the basketball, and finish around the rim with force. Time will tell to see if he can keep that up. But Chris Paul seemed to get under the skin of De'Aaron Fox with his flopping, and given Warrior fans have been on the wrong end of CP's dives for years, they know how Foxy feels. Overall, Wardell took the moment by the balls like he did in the 2022 Finals and three other Finals matchups just like it. The Haterade may be strong, but Steph knows how to handle it. The man sees everything, so look for him to continue to use the smallest bits of disrespect as motivation. Regardless, the man is locked in and healthy at age 35, and his defiance of father time is miraculous and under-talked about. I was shocked to see all the hate on Twitter afterwards, considering it was an exhibition yet Steph laid it out on the line for NBA fans across the globe. You have to respect his commitment to take these games serious. Also, you have to love the leadership from Steph to give credit to GP2 for guarding him in practice, saying the contest from Fox at the end was nothing with how the young glove checks him in scrimmages. I want to know what's the most insane part about Wardell in your opinion. Let me know for a chance at next video shoutout and to compete in Community Speaks. Today's shoutout goes to Massach first who gives his staff predictions for Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody. Solid take right there. Thank you again for supporting this content. DFlow signing off.